Now that we know a bit about URDF and Zacro, we can start working towards getting our factory simulation ready. This is the factory that you've seen in the welcome video at the start of this course. We have a slight problem though. This version of it is not currently set up correctly. To get it into a shape where we can start thinking about mobile robot navigation and picking and placing parts, we'll have to make some changes. First of all, we can't have all these bins here. The mobile robot that will be introduced in week three cannot come close enough to the robot like this. And we actually only need the bin at the other end of the factory for the TurtleBot to deliver the part it's carrying to. So we're going to repurpose this bin for that and move it to over here. Apart from these things, we also need to add the second robot to the factory and add something to mount it on. So all in all, we have the following tasks to complete. We remove four out of five bins. We move the remaining bin to the current location. We add a mount and add the second robot. So let's get started with the first task, removing the bins. First open the file that contains the URDF in a text editor. I'm going to use Atom here as an editor, but any editor will do. Using an editor with support for XML highlighting, though, is a good idea, as it makes reading a URDF or Zacro file a bit easier. So now that we have opened the main or the top level Zacro file, let's have a quick look around. As you can see here, the Zacro declares a name and a namespace, but that we'll ignore for now. The name, however, is the name of our scene. It says robot here but that is just the name of the root element, and we can definitely model other things with the URDF, as we'll see later. Next up is a definition of an empty link with the name world. It's always a good idea to have a clear starting point of your scene, a link that everything else is connected to. Typically, we choose names like base link or world. As we'll also be working with Gazebo later, we have a world here. We then see a number of Zacro include statements, followed by a call to the macro they define. Here, for instance, the model for the UR10 near the conveyor belt is imported. And here we see the model actually being added to the world by instantiating the macro. Notice the two arguments it gets passed, prefix and joint limited. After importing all the building blocks of the world and adding the models they define, they are still unconnected, but have not been placed anywhere yet. So further down, we see a number of joints that take care of this. So here we have the joint that connects the suction gripper to the robot's tool frame. And here we have the joints that place the bins next to the conveyor and the robot. Notice how each joint always has a parent and a child, where the child link refers to what should be connected and the parent refers to what something should be connected to. So the origin elements specify the relative offset between the parent and the child. In other words, at which distance from the parent should the child link be placed in the world. Now that we have an idea of the structure of the file, Let's start changing it. As we decided earlier, we need to remove some of the bins. To remove a model from a URDF world, at least two things should be removed. The joint that connects it to its parent and the macro call that adds it to the world. When you're removing a model of which only a single instance exists in the world, you could also just as well remove the model import statement as it is not needed any longer. But you could also just leave it as the model definition will just be ignored if it's never instantiated. Removing the bins is relatively straightforward. There are five model instantiations, or micro calls, and five fixed joints, one for each bin. We'll have to remove four of the joints and four of the micro calls. Let's start with the joints. They are at the end of the file, so let's scroll down and select the last four. We'll leave bin one joint as that is needed for the bin that we keep around. So we selected it and we delete the lines. 
With the joints gone, we must remove the model instantiations as well. Before we do that though, let's see what happens if we would forget that. And instead of launching Arvis to see what happens, let's use the check UDF tool that we saw earlier. So we have to go back to the terminal. And we have to change to the correct directory. And now check URDF only knows how to check URDFs. And the factory file is a Zacro. So we'll first have to convert the Zacro to a URDF. And we can do that like this. And now we can use the check URDF tool. As expected, check URDF is not happy. It finds two root links. And as we remember, UDF only supports scenes with a single root, so this is not a valid URDF. To fix this problem, we'll just have to remove the model instantiations or the Zacro macro calls. So we have to go back to the editor. We scroll up a bit to where the instantiations are. We select them, and then we delete them. Now everything should be fine, but let's do a quick check with check URDF. That looks good. So now let's see the result in Arvis. Use the file visualize hrwros.launch to start the visualization. Great. Now there's only a single bin left. Only thing remaining is to move the bin to the correct location. As a quick reminder, we're going to move the bin to here, behind the pallet with the boxes on it. Remember that all joints define transforms between links and the origins of joints allow us to specify the exact position relative to the center of the factory world, in our case. The joint for the bin already has an origin, so we just need to update that one with the right values for the X and Y coordinates. Bin 1 is currently at 0.3 meters in the negative X direction and 1.2 meters in the positive Y direction relative to the world frame. So let's update those values to move the bin. The location behind the pallet is at 8.0 meters in the negative X direction and at 2.2 meters in the negative Y direction. All done. Let's start Arvis again to see the result. Don't forget to save the file, switch to the terminal, and start Arvis again using the visualize hrwros.launch file. It looks like everything is in order. The bin is nicely situated behind the pallet with the boxes, and there's plenty of space remaining to place the second robot next to it. The turtlebot should also have no problems reaching this location. With that, we've completed our first two tasks. But we're far from done, as we're still missing the second robot. Continue to the next video to learn how we can add things to the world and start working on the two remaining tasks.